Decisions are restarting AstraZeneca vaccinations. Today, the European Medicines Agency, the EMA, said once again that the drug is safe and highly effective. Germany, France, Italy and Spain are among the countries lifting their ban. The EMA concluded that the vaccine was not associated with an overall increase in the risk of blood clots. It was that fear that led more than a dozen European Union countries to pause their vaccinations with the AstraZeneca shot. The EMA says the benefits of the shot outweigh the risks, but it is not ruling out completely the possibility of a link to rare blood clots. Meanwhile, the British medicines regulator, the MHRA, has also spoken out in favor of the continued use of the AstraZeneca vaccine. In a statement, it says the benefits of using the vaccine far outweigh any dangers. The MHRA said that five reported cases of a very rare cerebral blood clot amounted to one in a million people who have been vaccinated. It's not clear if there is a link, but investigations continue. Now, to show his confidence in the AstraZeneca vaccine, the head of the British National Health Service received the shot today in public. Simon Stevens got his jab in a vaccination center in Westminster Abbey. About half the UK adult population has now been vaccinated. There are problems, though, with a shortage of vaccines predicted for April. Doctors are also reporting that more people are hesitant about receiving the AstraZeneca vaccine. I'm very concerned, uh, particularly having worked so hard trying to deploy the vaccines to everyone who needs it. And we've really made lots of gains, particularly with vaccine hesitancy. And the last week, that work has been completely just destroyed because now we're having our clinics not being as full as before and patients cancelling and not turning up because of the rumours that have been spread about the AstraZeneca vaccine causing clots, which is not evidence-based. All right, reservations, hesitations, and some people expressing their confidence in the AstraZeneca vaccine. Let's bring in educator John Campbell in the UK. Mr. Campbell, it's good to see you again. The British regulators, um, the MHRA, they have reiterated that they think the vaccine should be used, but they say there have been reported blood issues and also that people should see a doctor if they get headaches after um, a jab. Is this an abundance of caution mm. or is this a case of no smoke without fire? No, I think they are being very cautious. And what a confusing week it's been, really. We learned mm. about the increased risk of blood clots. And when we talk about blood clots, we normally think about the blood clots in the legs, the deep venous thrombosis that can go up to the lungs, causing a pulmonary embolism, and they're very common. Now, it's interesting that the European Medicines Agency and the H uh, MHRA have now both said that these aren't more common. So they're fairly sure this, this what we call a venothromboembolism, is not more common. But what's transpired in the past few days is this um, there's, there's these vessels cerebral sinus veins that drain the blood back from the brain and there is a slight increase in the thrombus in blood clots in those vessels so having got rid of one type of blood clot saying that they're not an issue they're not caused by the vaccine and that there's no association with the vaccine with those with those type of blood clots we've now got this other sort of blood clot mm. and there does seem to be a slight increase about 18 cases reported in the UK and Europe after 20 million doses of Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine so there does seem to be about one case per 1.2 to 1.5 million cases now this is a correlation um, it's not it's not a causality and, and the the uh, the MHRA and the European Medicines Agency are both saying there's a correlation they're not saying there's, there's a causality here and more more needs to be done more needs to be investigated mm. but it's incredibly rare and both agencies are saying that the, the risk of not being vaccinated far surpasses any risk of this potential correlated side effect. Dr. Kim, let me ask you, Boris Johnson said today that the BioNTech Pfizer vaccine and the AstraZeneca vaccine are pretty much identical in terms of safety. Um, given the current situation, is that a helpful statement? Well, I think it probably is. I mean, we can certainly say that's the case in terms of the very common sorts of blood clots, the venothromboembolism. If anything, vaccination gives a level of protection. And even in the data published by the European Medicines Agency, there's no actual direct comparison between the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine and the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine. Nor does the European data seem to take into account other possible correlations. For example, we know that these sort of cerebral sinus vein thrombus 
hormone bursts are more common in women who are taking oral contraception, but that doesn't seem to have been accounted for. So it could well turn out that this is a correlation, or it could well turn out there is a level of causality here. But there is, if there is, it's, it's a very, very small effect, as we say, um, perhaps one case for about 1.2 to 1.5 million vaccinations. The UK has vaccinated about half of the adult population now. I mean, given that wonderful milestone, mm. are you seeing the benefits of a successful vaccination campaign? Well, we are seeing reduction in cases in the UK at the moment, but this is largely as a result of the lockdown measures. We are seeing more antibodies in older age groups and that the, the antibodies in the age groups are coming younger into the younger age groups all the time. So there is more immunity being generated starting from the older age groups and of course the healthcare providers who were vaccinated early moving down. So we are just starting to see some effect of that now. But of course we have to remember that there's no significant immunological effect for at least three weeks after either vaccine so there's always a delay so the decreased cases we're seeing now are remarkably encouraging perhaps still mostly due to lockdown measures but increasingly and this will be increasingly so in the coming weeks due to immunity caused by the, the vaccination program dr john campbell as always dr campbell it's good to get your insights it's also good to have some good news to talk about tonight for a change thank you yeah thank you very well, the day is almost done. The conversation, it continues online. You'll find us on